This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at the myriad of ways in which you can create screenshots and the handful of ways in which you can create screen recordings using the tools built into Windows 11. It's coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. Everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt. And this week, we're going to take a look at the different ways in which you can uh, create screenshots, which are still images of what's happening on screen, and also screen recordings, which are videos of what's happening on screen, using the tools that are built into Windows 11. Um, as it turns out, there are actually many ways you can create screenshots. Uh, and there are one or two ways, depending on how you want to count that, um, to sc- create screen recordings. Um, this is technology in many ways that dates back to the beginning of not Windows, but rather the PC and MS-DOS, right? If you think back to the original IBM PC, it had a print screen button. And the point of that button was that you would press it and it would literally print to whatever was attached to L, you know, PT1, (laughs) uh, whatever line printer was there, and it would print out what was on the screen. And what was on the screen at that time was text. And so it was basically just taking the buffer and dumping it uh, to the printer instead of to the screen. It's kind of an interesting bit of functionality, but as we move forward in time, obviously GUIs and windows in particular take off and we still have print screen buttons on our, <laughs> on our keyboards. And we still have this need to take and capture what's going on on screen, but what's happening on screen now is graphical. It's not textual in nature. So the print screen button is the first and oldest way to record what's on the screen. It dates back, like I said, in text form to the original IBM PC and MS-DOS, but it dates back in Windows to the first version of Windows, and that's when it switched over to being what it is today. So print screen is gonna be hard for me to demo because you can't see me hit the print screen button, but if you hit that button on your, or your key, I should say, on your keyboard, it will take a screen capture. Now, in my case, I have two displays attached to this computer that we're recording the show on. So the screen capture is gonna look a little different because you're gonna see both of those screens. But typically, most people will have a single um, screen. And so the screen capture will represent that uh, that exact screen. So I I will hit the print screen button, or I said say I have hit the print screen button. And now we can go to the Paint app. And I'll just zoom this down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But um, here you can see what you would typically see, which is just that one screen, right? It's just the, the desktop and the recycle bin and the taskbar, everything that you can see on screen. And that's exactly what you would expect. And so from here, you could um, save this file. Obviously, you could use it in Microsoft Word document. You could you know, upload it to the web, whatever you wanted to do with it. Um, that's the point. The other big usage here is to use uh, Alt plus print screen. I'm just going to open a file explorer window. And what that will do is we'll capture the currently selected the the window that has focus, right? So the file explorer window is focused. I hit alt plus print screen, go back to paint. And now when I paste this thing in, of course, what I'm getting is just that window and same rules apply. You can cut and paste and, uh, you know, save the file, all that kind of stuff. So great. Um, the problem with print screen should be fairly obvious, but in case it's not, is that it doesn't save a file automatically, right? Um, You need to know that there's a clipboard and you need to know that that's where it's going. And then you need to know what to do with it afterwards. And so um, previous to Windows 11, but a few versions ago, Microsoft added a shortcut uh, that will not only capture the screen, but will also save it to disk. And that, that shortcut is Windows key plus print screen. So if I do that, The screen actually dims, which is nice because it gives you an indication that something happened and then a file is saved. Now here you have to know where to go, but in my, and not in my case, in all cases, it goes to the pictures folder. And if you don't have one, it will create a screenshots folder. You can see I create a lot of screenshots. And then in here you can see the screenshot. Now, again, I'm, I'm using two screens. And so you see two different things here, but typically it would just be the the right side of the screen here. And so, okay, that's good. Um, The other thing you can do is, you could hit Windows key plus Alt plus print screen, and that's kind of interesting. But the 
if you remember from the Xbox Game Pass chapter, that keyboard shortcut is actually taken over by, excuse me, the Xbox Game Bar chapter. That feature, that keyboard shortcut is actually taken over by that application. So if I do that, let me bring up a file explorer window again, it's simple. Windows key plus alt plus print screen. Um, what you'll see is this notification appear from the game bar. And if I click on that, it doesn't do anything. There it goes. I was going to say, it should break up the Xbox game bar. So what this does is it shows all the game screenshots I've taken, plus this one screenshot of this application window, which looks a little out of place in this interface. Uh, but if we close this down, <laughs> um, we can just go to the pitch. I'm sorry, in this case, the videos folder. So same sort of thing. Uh, there's a, it creates a captures folder. Uh, this it has a unique uh, naming structure. They're not alphabetical by date and time. In this case, it says home because that's the name of the application window. I've taken screenshots of Halo Infinite, so you see some of those screenshots here. Also, Minecraft Legends, but um, that's kind of the point. The idea is that uh, because this is considered a screen capture, it's part of Xbox uh, Game Bar. It puts it in here with other captures that would typically be from games, um, which could include screen recordings as well. But in this case, it's just a screenshot. So that's where you find that. I kind of don't like how inconsistent that is, but um, that's the system that we <laughs> that we have to live with. Um, so that's that. Now, understanding that these uh, methods of taking screenshots are semi non-discoverable, right? that most people probably don't know they even exist. I think a lot of people don't even know that cut, copy, and paste exist. Uh, Microsoft decided to create a tool that can be used to create screenshots, and now actually in a more recent version, also screen captures, screen recordings, um, that's graphical in nature, right? So it's something more obvious. That thing is called the snipping tool. And in a future version of Windows 11, it's actually going to take over what print screen does on your keyboard for the first time, literally since the beginning of the PC. But for now, you have to run it manually unless you change how it's configured. So I'll just search for that and start uh, and bring up this application. So you get the simple little application. And this solves a lot of the problems with um, with print screen and with Windows key plus print screen, which is, A, it's it's discoverable, sem semi-discoverable. Um, you know, if you search, if you go into search and start typing screenshot snipping tool comes up right so that's kind of neat semi-discoverable like i said it's going to be the default soon that's good it has some basic editing tools which we'll look at in a little while it has different um, capture uh, modes it can capture an arbitrary rectangle which you can draw on the screen it can capture a window like print screen like all plus print screen it can capture the full screen like print screen and it also can capture a, a free form mode which technically or i should say literally doesn't make a lot of sense on most computers but if you have a touch based screen where maybe you can draw with your finger or a pen based screen uh, you might want to do that kind of thing where you circle part of it and capture that uh, but i would say for the most part you're going to do full screen or you're going to do window mode it also supports a timer which is kind of nice uh, so you can have the thing countdown you can get everything where you want it and then do the countdown i won't do that here but um, when you record you just click the uh, the new button here and it does the screen capture based on what you chose now again I, you get the two screens it's a little confusing but I you know dual screen setup but now you can see the editing tools that you have available it's just basic stuff it's very similar to something you would see on a, a touch based system if you're using OneNote or if you're familiar with the editing uh, tools in uh, that are built into Microsoft Edge very similar there as well so you have basic uh, pens of various sizes and colors highlighting erasing a level tool, uh, a touch writing. So if you have a touch screen, you can write it right on the screen, uh, cropping and uh, undo, redo, et cetera, et cetera. So you can save and it does all that stuff. So that's good. I'll just restart that app so you can get, the, get it back with nothing in it. The other thing you can see here in the middle of the window is it says you can press the Windows logo key, Win key, plus shift plus S to start a snip. Now, you need to know that before you can do it, but it's nice because they put it in the application window. And that's kind of cool because you can start a snip, as they call it, kind of don't like that term either, but you can start a screen capture, I would call it, um, without having to run the application first. So if you can remember that keyboard shortcut, um, you could just type that in and then you'll get this uh, overlay. It's just a little pane and it gives you those four modes. And so you can choose what you want. So I'll just choose a full screen uh, snip. It gives you a nice little pop up. Uh, notification here you can click on that it opens that thing in the snipping tool it's just a it's just kind of a nicer experience um, the other thing you can do with this uh, app which is kind of uh, kind of interesting is you can do a screen recording now 
there's technically one other way to do a screen recording built into Windows 11, and that's that Xbox Game Bar that we talked about before and in a previous episode. But that tool is really designed for taking uh, screen capture, screen recording, sorry, of games. Uh, this is really the better way to t take a screen recording if you want what's happening on screen on the desktop, right? Now, you don't have a lot of options here. You don't get, you know, you can't choose rectangles and, you know, freeform and all that stuff, but um, you can start your new capture. And it just goes. And again, here you're going to see the same effect. Unfortunately, it may, uh, the screen goes dim a little bit. You can click the start button, start the recording, and then click it again to stop. Um, I'll just click stop and, and get rid of that. Now, in this case, this thing is saved to your videos folder as an MP4 file, which makes tons of sense. So with all these options, you're thinking, okay, well, this is, this is all well and good. And uh, in the future, uh, actually today, if you wanted to, there's an option in the snipping tool where you can make snipping tool the default for print screen. If you want to do that, you can do that today. That's good. Uh, but the one thing none of those screenshot tools gives you is the way to is a way to capture the mouse pointer. And for that reason, of course, you know, in my case, when I'm writing a book and I need screen captures, a lot of times I need to show what people are clicking on or whatever. Um, you have to find a third party utility. Uh, the one I use is called GreenShot. I do recommend it highly. It's free. It's available on the web. Uh, there's also something called ShareX, also free. I believe it's in the Microsoft Store, uh, but it's also available from the web. And both of these applications and probably others have options where you can capture the screen as part of your uh, screenshot process. So I'm going to run GreenShot. I, I turned it off because it takes over some of the... Uh, um, the capabilities of print screen. So I'll just click here on something in this window and I'll hit all print screen right to capture the window. And it saves it to my desktop here, as you can see. And the difference is now you, you get the window like you would expect, but you have the mouse cursor built in, which is what I'm looking for in this case. So that's actually really handy um, if you need that kind of thing. Unfortunately, it's like I said, it's the only major feature I can think of for screenshots that's not built into any of the tools in Windows. So it's just good to know you have to turn to a third party tool if you want to do that. So I think that's everything. I hope you found this useful. Uh, we will be back every Thursday with a new episode of Hands on Windows. You can learn more at twit.tv slash HOW. And uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor in chief of Ad Astra Magazine. And each week I join with my co host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time. <laughs>